practically all important respects, this is a true story. Wherever possible, we have used the original locations and even the actual words spoken. It is the account of a family, the Cotier family. There they are, Jean, Doris, and their two kids, who, because of one of those passing split-second decisions, learn that the night holds terror. <laughs> Jack Kelly as Jean Courtier. Hildy Parks as Doris Courtier. Vince Edwards, John Cassavetes, and David Cross as the three vicious criminals who invaded their lives. What happened to the Courtiers could happen to you. I'd been to Los Angeles and was returning home. You see, I lived at the Edwards Air Force Base. That's out in the desert near Mojave. I had a wonderful family and a good job. What more could a man ask for? Then I spotted a fellow trying to hitch a ride. That's how it all began. On the afternoon of February 16th, 1953, it was one of those quick, impulsive decisions. But I stopped. I go as far as the Dry Lake Road. Just this side of Mojave. It's fair enough. <clears throat> Take you as far as Edwards. You work at the air base? Yeah, I'm with North American. At first, I thought this was a Lincoln. These merch look a lot like him in the front. Yeah, but it's a smooth little buggy, though. You really skim right along in it. Suppose you hold it at 50. Why 50? Because I say so. For this. Exactly 50, buddy, on a dot. This is a stinking trick. Yeah, I know. You better watch those bumps. She's got a head trigger and will go off with the least little jar. Okay, okay. So I'm doing everything you say. You just better keep it up, mister. Now let's have your wallet. Come on. Okay. Come on. But you sure picked the wrong car. Ten bucks. That's all you got? I spent the rest. That's why I went into L.A. this morning, to get some parts for a high-fidelity recorder I'm building. They're right there in the back. The fellas aren't going to be happy about this. Not happy at all. Why are you doing that? They'll be catching up to us pretty soon. They're kind of skittish about having you see their faces. Oh. I wouldn't try looking back if I were you. Look, you got all my money. What more do you want? Why don't you let me go? It's not that simple, buddy. Now you just drive straight ahead. I'll tell you where to turn off. <laughs> Just before Redmond that they made me turn off on this little used road that wound its way to the Rosamond Dry Lake. It was a wild and desolate part of the country bordering on the Mojave Desert. Why, why had I stopped to give that guy a lift? It was taking a chance, I knew that. Yet nearly everyone's picked up a hitchhiker at one time or another. Haven't you? Put both hands on the wheel. And keep your eyes straight ahead of you, understand? Okay, now slide out. Slide out carefully. Don't try to look around. You just don't try anything out of line, buddy. All right, take one look in my direction, fella, and I'll kill you now. It's that simple. You know how much dough this drip had? Ten bucks. Ten lousy bucks. Should have stopped a Lincoln. So I thought it was a Lincoln. Smirks look a lot like him. Take your coat and shoes off. What do you guys want? What are you gonna do? I said take that coat off! Come on. I right, walk straight ahead of you. All right, lie down on your face. I hope for your sake you haven't been holding out on us. You 
sure drew a blank. What am I, psychic? How am I supposed to know how much dough this guy's carrying? How do you want it, Buster? Straighten ahead while you're lying there, or do you want to run for it and get it in the guts? Why do you have to kill me? Why? Never heard of a stiff fingering a guy, did you? There's your answer. But he hasn't seen us. He did me. Fellas, give me a break. I promise I won't go to the cops. I promise it. Why should I over a lousy ten bucks? If you'll just let me go. Fat chance. But I got a wife and two kids. You gotta listen to me. Shut up! It's about time you got a few notches on your gun. How about it? This is your idea. Are you yellow? Maybe. Not wanting to kill a guy who's being yellow. All right. If you haven't got the guts, I'll do it myself. Could be you need glasses. Are you kidding? Anyone could see it was only trying to nick his ear. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. All right, I'll prove it to you. I'll do it again. How about it, fella? Did I hit it that time? If you're gonna kill me, get it over with, will ya? I did it. We told you not to move. Maybe I hadn't made up my mind before. Now I gotta let you have it. This will be a dead shot right between the eyes. It's a shame killing a guy for ten bucks. A stinking shame. Maybe you got something there. Could be that we don't have to kill him at all. That is, for any ten bucks. Meaning what? Is that Mercury in your name? Yeah. Oh, listen, that car's plenty hot. We can never unload it. We're not going to. Where's the pink slip? I still owe a couple of hundred bucks on it. The pink slip's at Stransky Motors. Where are they? It's right over there in Lancaster. Look, I'll help you sell it. I'll even sign the pink slip over to you. I'll do anything you say. What do you think? I like it. I don't like it. It's too risky. But I'll cooperate with you in every way. You can count on it. That we can. That car's worth at least $2,000. You fellas can realize $1,800. That's a lot of dough. Brush yourself off. I'll take one look toward our license plate and we'll kill you now. He told the truth, all right. It's his car and a legal owner, Stransky. Come on, let's get started. By the way, fella. His name's Gene Cortier. Lives over that uh, housing project at Edwards. Anyway. Don't let that ear business fool you. I'm a dead shot. That yellow flower over there, you see it? Yeah. Now you don't. Do I make my point? Perfectly. Well, let's go. I'll follow. I don't want you to look back toward the other car. Lie in the back, keep your head down. If you try anything funny, Courtier, you'll get a slug. Here's how. Just that easy. Tell him you want the money in cash. That's a must. We'll cook up a good reason for it right now. I'd read about the bodies being found in the desert with a bullet hole in the head. I figured once they got their hands on the money, my turn would be next. Don't get any funny ideas in your head, Cody, eh? Like trying to outsmart us. Guess you know by now we mean business. If I have to, I'll kill everybody in the place. It was hard to believe that this was really happening. In broad daylight, in a car showroom, on a busy street. Yet I was but a split second from death. The length of time it would take to draw a gun. Slim as my chances were, I'd have to make a break for it. Now. It was then that I noticed this side door. It was wide open. Could I make it? I wondered. It was all a matter of odds. How quick could he get out his gun? How quick could I make the door? The car would offer some protection if I could crouch low enough as I ran. It meant taking a desperate chance. But I'd made up my mind to make a try for it. This was it. And something happened. I couldn't take the risk of that woman and little boy getting killed. Why did they have to show up at this very moment? I was trapped. And I knew it. But all I could do now was play along with them. 
make it seem like I was on the level. 100% on the level. And hope and pray for some kind of a break. I can't go any 2400, fellas. Best I can do is 2000 tops. Okay, make it 21 and it's a deal. Sorry, fellas. 2000's my ceiling. Oh, that car's worth at least 2100 and you know it. And you better take it to somebody else. Uh, all right, Mr. Stransky. But it must be in cash. All cash. All cash? Yeah. And you won't take my check? Well, my wife had an accident. She, she's up in a hospital in Oakland. She was visiting her folks. That's why he's got to sell the car. He needs the money right away. Well, even so, it's rather unusual. Besides, the banks are all closed after 3 o'clock. Look, how much cash do you have? 500 bucks, maybe. Still, I have to come around for the rest of the morning. But I should leave tonight. I'm sorry. Well, I guess you'll just have to wait until morning. Come on in the office, fellas. You go get a cab. All right, Mr. Courtier. I work at North American. I bought the car here in the first place. Matter of fact, you still got the pink slip. You want a drink? Never needed one worse. Silver Siren. Hey, passengers have to ride me that. That's okay. Let's have it. Again, I had that almost overpowering urge to run for it. Bullet in the back was better than this. They were planning something new. That much was for sure. Give me a screwdriver. Double shot of anything. I got bad news for you, Courtier. Those fellows are mean babies. So? So they want the rest of that dough. That makes it rugged. But I'll stay in the car. I'll go to a hotel with you. I won't give you any trouble. I know you won't. But how about your wife? What's she gonna do when you don't show? That's Look, what I don't care what them. you do with me, but leave my family out of this. Watch. Well, we got your address off the registration. We know where your family lives, so take it easy. Trigger happy guys and go into my house. I don't care what happens. Knock it off. Be smart. They'd just as leave put a slug in you as not. Besides, if you try anything stupid, they take it out on your family. Your only chance is to play along with them. Okay, let's go. We're leaving. Come on. Back door. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? Your house. My house? You wouldn't really go to my house. You wouldn't do that. But look, I can call my wife and make a good excuse to her for not being there. She won't give you any trouble. I promise it. Now, please. You can stand right by the phone when I talk to her. You can hear everything I say, every word. Look, Cordier, we're not taking any chances with you. We're going to your house, so stop your yapping. There's nothing you can do about it. He was so right. What could I do? Even if I did get away, I couldn't run the risk of them taking it out of my family. Give him the tape glasses. Put them on. Come on. Come on, let's go. One thing was dead certain. They wanted to make plenty sure I didn't get a look at their license plates. It will take the long way around. I want it to be good and dark when we reach his house. If you hadn't known that jalopy, <laughs> you'd be lying out in the middle of the desert right now with a bullet in you. 
You know that, don't you, Cotier? Yes, why? He's the most dame crazy jerk I've ever seen. He can't keep his hands off women. Who? The one that got fresh with that taxi driving broad. Thanks for warning me. What's it worth to you to get my family and me out of this? Skip it, there's not a chance. Would 10,000 bucks interest you? Ah, you nuts. Where are you gonna get that kind of lettuce? My dad. You heard of those Cordier markets in L.A.? And he'll give me 10 grand, and just like that, Look, I'll make it 20. You can have the money in the morning. You can take my word for it. Not interested. Nah, you're goofing off. You think I'd cross these guys up and get a slug in my head just because of a screwball promise like that? How dumb do you think I am? Look, please believe me, I'm on the level. Take my word for it. Cut it. explain everything to you just as soon as I can. Tell me now. I want to know. What about you? Honey, everything will be all right. Just hurry. Hope you don't mind us using your garage. Go on down to your bedroom. Now run. There's no sense in them leaving the car out for the neighbors to stare at. Honey, will you get out of here? Please, hurry. Kids, they're in the bedrooms back there. Boy, electronics must take off. Guy is loaded. Any guns in the house? No. I'm afraid to keep one around because of the children. You better not be lying to me. Check every drawer and closet just to play safe. Where's the phone? Right over there. I'll cut the wires. No. The phone company might get suspicious and send someone out. Check the back rooms. Make sure they can't get away. You stay here. While we're here, you'll do exactly as I say, and I mean exactly. Oh, fella, you got a wife and a couple of kids back there. You better not start anything. <laughs> You're pretty brave with that gun in your hand, aren't you? Relax. Take it easy. You've got the whole night to go yet. All right. What are you doing here? What do you want with us? I'll ask the question, sweetheart. Now you just don't try screaming or anything like that. Do just as you told me, and we're going to get along. Okay. Anybody likely to drop in here tonight? No. No one that I know of. She are a couple of nice looking kids. You wouldn't dare touch them. You wouldn't dare. Hey, you're imagining things, sweetheart. We're nice guys. We don't want to hurt anybody. That is, if we can help it. Now, you wouldn't try anything foolish like trying to get out that window there, would you? Remember, we got a gun trained on your old man. And don't you forget it. I don't know what you want with us, but get out of here! Okay. I never expected to find a sharp-looking doll like you stuck out here in the middle of the sticks. It's all right, Stevie. It's all right. 
Didn't you say that thing had a hair trigger on it? Yep. Well, the safety catch is off in case you didn't know it. I know it. Expecting any calls? No. You expecting any calls? Well, Gene's dad. I talked to him earlier. What about? Well, he lives in L.A. I had four phone him. I just seen Gene. I told him I'd call him back when Gene got here. Answer it! No, daughter, stay where you are. I don't want you to see his face. It's a little late to be worrying about that, isn't it? Didn't you hear what I said? Answer that phone. No, I'll get it. I wouldn't try it if I were you, Buster. You want me to come in there and get you? Come on, hurry up. Come on, come on. It's his old man telling everything's okay. Make it sound natural. One word out of the land is going to be your last. Should have answered it sooner. Don't stall around like that again. I'm warning you. Hello? Oh, Dad. No, you had the right number before. Gene? He had a little tire trouble. Yes, I'll tell it. Goodbye. Did you call anyone else about him being late? You better tell him, honey. The state police. What did you say? Gene was late and I was worried. I called Harry Osborne. He's a friend of ours. Then what? He checked to see if there were any accidents, and there weren't. That's all. I hope so, for your sake. How dare you? How dare you come in our home this way, ordering us around, threatening us with guns? Now go on, get out, all of you, just get out! Oh, shut up, will you? Now, get this straight. We'd just soon kill you and your whole family, is not. Ask him what happened today. Go ahead, ask him. He came so close to getting it, it wasn't even funny. He's right, lady. These boys aren't fooling. What did happen today? He took a shot at me. He just grazed my ear. I suppose it gave you a sadistic thrill. Yeah. How did it feel to know you were going to be killed? You just accept it, that's all. Boy, you're a cool one. I'll say that for you. Look, honey, it'll be all over with in the morning. I had to sign our car over to them. They can't get the money until the bank opens. How about some coffee? I'll make it. See what it is. It's Phyllis Harrison. I borrowed some cigarettes from her earlier. Go ahead. Oh, Jean, we were so worried about you. I thought I'd come over and sit with Doris until you got back. Well, I'm home now. Everything's all right. So I see. Is Doris there? She got tired, so she went to bed. Good night, Phyllis. Well, night. Good night. Now you're playing it smart. Think I'll take a shower. 
How about some scrambled eggs with that coffee? I'll give you a hand. Stay where you are, Claudia. Please, don't stop anything. She's so right. Especially with a couple of kids in the house. There's a limit to this. Sit down and shut up! Gene, do what he says. You heard the little lady. Gene, please, for my sake. Okay. Does he roll over twice when you snap your fingers? Now, what would you do with a gun pointed at your head? I know what you've said. What you I can't take any more of this. You're going to kill us. Kill us now and get it over with, will you? Oh, when you get her out of here, I'll make that coffee. Come on, honey, let's go. Save boss man. It's Harry Osmond. You watch it, Cordia. This is no dumb dame you're dealing with this time. You've got to keep him from coming in. If anything goes wrong, we'll blast the both of you. Well, I'm sure glad you got back all right. Doris was pretty worried when I talked to her. Everything's all right now. Thanks a lot, Harry. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I've been transferred to Oregon. We dropped in to say goodbye. Oh, honey. Doris is in bed. I think the worrying got her down. Oh, well, that's too bad. We'll, we'll only stay a minute. I don't think Doris wants to see anybody tonight. She just isn't up to it. Oh, but she'll never forgive us if we don't even say goodbye. I'm afraid that we can't see you tonight. You'll have to excuse us. Well, all right, Jean, if that's the way you want it. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye. It was an endless, torturous night. We knew that we had to string along with them. Even if we had to count to ten, over and over and over again, all night long. I think I'll turn in. He was using our bedroom, of course. He'd have thought he owned the house, but it worried me, his leaving the room. I had a sickening feeling that Romeo was just biding his time until he was out of the way. You'd like to dance? If you don't mind, I'll see how the children are. I'm not afraid your old man will get jealous. I just don't care to dance, that's all. Well, I do. You leave her alone. Hey, you talk big, fella. But it so happens we're running this show. What do you want to remind her? Jim, please. Take this guy to the back bedroom, and if he gives you any trouble, call me. Now, come on, get going. Jim, please don't do anything foolish. Gene, as long as the children are here, we just have to take it. At least if you're here, you know what's going on. I'll dance with you. That's my gal.
shut them up. Look, he'll be all right. If you don't shut those kids up, I will. Let me go in the back, will you? Just let out one more scream like that, it'll be your last. That <laughs> drooling idiot makes one more pass at my wife, it'll be his last. I don't care what happens. All right, get him out of here. I ought to kick your brains in. You want the whole neighborhood's on our back? Okay, okay, forget it. There's only one window in that bedroom. In plain view from the kids' room. All right, Dick. Nobody's going to hurt us. Now, you two sit here all night so they can see you from the other room. You can watch it from in there. And one of us will always have an eye on him, that's for sure. Now, you go in there and check up on him every once in a while when they least expect it. Otherwise, leave him alone. By now, you have a real nice, pleasant sleep. I intend to. You know something? What? Nobody sucks me and gets away with it. Just nobody. If you go for his gun, you're going to wake him up. Shh. Hey, come on, snap out of it. I'm having enough trouble keeping awake. Oh, relax, will you? It just seems so utterly fantastic. But it isn't just us. You know that. If only he drowse off in time. How do you know you'll kill him right away? Maybe he'll still go for his gun or cry out or warn the others. For you too. You nuts, nuts. You just want to kill me. Your fault. Just just go right over. It. I meant what I said. What is this? I take it easy if I were you. Could be the boss would do a little skull massaging himself if he knew what happened. Maybe you just better forget the whole thing if you're smart.
Not a half second. Why did I hesitate? I could have killed him. I wonder. What do you mean? I saw you hesitate. And I wonder, that's all. If I could have killed him? Yes. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety-five. Seventeen ninety-five. Thank you. They had me over a barrel, but good. What could I do? Guy waiting back there at the house, his gun trained on Doris and the kids. From Lancaster back to the housing project was a 20-minute ride. 20 agonizing minutes before we'd know the answer. Doris, Deborah, Steve, and all of us. Would we live or would we die? Trying to get the children to eat a little breakfast. How about some coffee? Yeah, sure. Got some bad news for you. What do you mean, bad news? You got the dough, didn't you? Yeah, 800 bucks. 800 bucks? And hey, what are you guys handing me? Cordier owed more on that old jalopy than he thought he did. He said a couple of hundred bucks. So he was wrong. How wrong can a guy get? Are you trying to tell me he owed over a grand and didn't know it? Maybe he's got a short memory. And maybe somebody else has a shorter one. All right, what did you get for that car? Leave me out of this. Look, if it wasn't for me, you'd have had your head split wide open last night. Now I'm asking you for the last time. Come on, give. You're over 21. Figure it out yourself. Thanks, that's all I wanted to know. Trying to make a little trouble, Cordier? One more crack out of you and I'm gonna close that big mouth of yours for keeps. You give me the rest of my dough and give me it quick. Or... Or what, Buster? You had something on your mind. What was it? Of all the stinking, lousy, chiseling double crosses. That did it. I don't want any part of you guys. Okay. Okay, so you win. But I'm getting off at the next stop. You're not getting off at any stop. You're in this for keeps, and don't you forget it. Nobody's gonna walk out on nobody. I should have better sense than let a cheap little punk like you carry a gun. All right, get my bag. We're leaving. Come on, everybody in the living room. Go ahead. just want to be let alone. I won't call the police or tell anyone ever. I promise you. I give you my word. <laughs> That's one for the book. You could tie us up. It'll be hours before anybody comes by. There's some rope out on the back porch. You could use that. What is this, a game of scouts and Indians? Sugar Plum, we're a couple of mugs with murder wraps hanging over us. What are you going to do? Mommy! <laughs> wouldn't dare. The whole country would be up in arms. They'd lynch you from the nearest post. I'm afraid you've both been seeing too many crime thrillers. Yeah, put that in my bag. Matter of fact, I've grown very fond of both of you. What a charming family group. I think I'll take this along with me. Show my friends what you all look like. You know, my pals at the Mafia. If anything should happen to us, they might like to drop in on you, so, so you could offer your condolences. Oh, let's go. Oh, wait a minute.
come with me. Why? What do you want with my husband? Obviously, I'm to be a hostage. If anything happens to us, he's dead, Doris. That's the way it's got to be. Why should I call the police? I'm a mother. I have two children. They mean a thousand times more to me than seeing you behind bars. Doris, Doris. Why should I care whether you're caught or not? Do you think I'd do anything in this world that would endanger the lives of my family? Well, do you? Honey, it's the way I want it. It'll get them out of the house and away from you and the kids. It's okay with me. Let's go. Oh, Dad! Come on, let's go. neighborhood to hear us. I mean exactly what I say. He'll call you when he's good and ready, not before. Phyllis's house as quickly as you can. Got to get the two of you out of here. Now, wait a minute. Go out the back door. Come on. Call Phyllis and give her some excuse for keeping you. Debbie! Debbie, you do understand, don't you, darling, that you mustn't say a word about what's happened here. Not to anyone. Daddy's life depends on it. I know, Mother. <laughs> Okay, what's the big idea? We're going back to the house in exactly five minutes. Check it. How come? Your wife's smart? Yeah, why? Because if she's not, we'll be reading about you in the papers tomorrow. The obituary column. What do you mean? If she calls the police, we'll know it. How? Because of a sliver of paper. It'll fall off if she lifts the receiver. That's pretty cute. Yeah, pretty cute. Five minutes is up. Your wife wasn't so smart. You see this? It'd fallen off if you'd lifted the receiver. I just thought you'd like to know. Where are the kids? They're out back playing. Yeah? If I were going to notify the police, I wouldn't have used the kids. I, I'd have used the phone, wouldn't I? Yeah. Maybe you got something there. Besides, you you're too smart to try any tricks. Only when we have a gun pointed right at your husband's back. Three T twenty five. Three T twenty five. A traffic accident. Vernon and Maine. Why didn't you tell my wife you were tuned into the police calls? Slipped my mind. Don't hand me that. You could have stopped her from calling the cops for sure if you told her about this. You are naive. Or is he making like a funny man? If the police were alerted to our hookup, they'd hardly be liable to put on an APB over the radio, now would they? This way, Buster, we got the coppers cooperating. She should be foolish enough to call in. 
They'll let us know. In three minutes flat. Hello? I'll have to call you later. You'll have to hang up, Mr. Ragland. I'm sorry. Wasn't that oh. Jean's boss? Oh, it's you, Phyllis. Well, that was Mr. Ragland down at the plant. I had to get him off the phone. I couldn't let him call and get a busy signal. Who's them? Honey, what cooks? Anyone can tell from the way the kids are acting. Something. Did they say about. anything? Nothing, and they were pretty obvious about it. Mamie's keeping an eye on them. This is her wash day. Oh. Look, honey, what's the matter? What's happened? Do you want to talk? Phyllis, what? What I'm about to tell you may cost Gene his life if you don't keep your mouth shut. Didn't stop here for gas. That's a cinch. Bright boy. Look, okay. here's a tip. A million dollar tip. If they swing up that dry lake road, you'd better make a run for it. I don't stand one chance in ten. That guy's a dead shot. It's better than your chances if you stick. Thanks. You know, I just don't understand you. It's just that I don't want to be tied in with no murder, that's all. No, don't give me that guff. You're trying to make me think I'm the first sucker you guys have nailed? Look, I just met these guys a couple of nights ago. I thought it'd be a simple heist. I don't go for this stuff. Hey, watch it. Thank you. We better call Jean's father. Phyllis, I don't dare. Why? Suppose those hoodlums call here and get a busy signal. We'll call from my house. I can't leave the phone. I'll call for you. Phyllis, it's too risky. Why? Suppose Jean's father loses his head and calls the police. He wasn't here last night. He doesn't know those men. But still, if you're going to... an operator might overhear or something. Phyllis, I can't take that chance. Okay. I'll call the FBI. Explain everything. They'll know what to do. That's too risky. Why? Those men are fiends. They might find out. How? Oh, how could they? I don't know. I don't know. They said they'd kill Jean if I told anybody. They meant it. But we've got to do something and do it quickly. We've got ten minutes left. Then the half hour's up. I just have to wait, that's all. It might be too late. Phyllis, what am I going to do? <laughs> wait the ten minutes. Call everybody. Hello, Al Tony Roger. All units, code 4, 319 West 65th Street. You guys hand me a laugh. You both think you're geniuses, but you're a couple of chrome-plated jerks. Yeah. Any jarhead can bump a guy off, but it takes brains to turn a guy into a gold mine. 200 grand, for instance. All right, quit horsing around. Come to the point. I will if you slow down. I can't think with my brains rattling around. You know who this guy's old man is? Who? Oh. Ever hear of those courtier markets in L.A.? This old man's the guy that owns them? Uh-huh. How do you know? Gene told me. He tried to bribe me to let him go with 50 grand. Maybe he was lying. Come to think of it, courtier is an unusual name. Yeah, I found this when I was looking for the guns. Hey. It's a letter from his old man, a company stationery. What do you know? Well, as long as we've kidnapped the guy anyway, we might as well go whole hog. Oh. Don't you try that again. Hey, we better barrel on it. That stupid broad's liable to call the cops at that. 
It's my guess she wasn't kidding about that half hour deal. It was 10.44 when she made that crack. I glanced at my watch. It's 9 after 11 now. I got 12 after. If anything comes over the radio about us, let him have it. Six minutes in case anyone's interested. So let the tomato call the cops. It'll be Cordia's funeral. And I do mean funeral. Well, look, if you guys want to loss, I'm getting 200 grand. It's okay the by me. car headed for Los Angeles. Approach with caution. Occupants are armed. Description of car. Ford convertible. Blue color. License 58 Nelly 4316. 58 Nelly 4316. about a mile or two down the road. We can phone from there. Phone in the booth? Yeah, yeah. And it's made to order. It's in a corner by itself where nobody can overhear. You're an idiot if don't call the police and fast. How? I can't leave the phone. Then use it. What if those gangsters call here and they get a busy signal? Can't be helped. You'll have to talk to the Los Angeles Police Department. Please, it's an emergency. You'll have to talk to them yourself. They'll want a complete description of the men and... Just a minute. Here, tell me all the dope you can give them. Uh, hello? Three men have taken my husband. He's being held as a hostage. Just a moment, please. I'll have to transfer you to homicide. In the trailer court? Homicide operator, please. Now be sure to cut that phone call short. When I mean short, you said that three times. Is that important? Are you sure you've got everything straight? I don't want any slip-ups. Described as male Caucasian. But he didn't see the license. Well, anyway, you've given us a good description on the man that helps. Excuse me, Mrs. Cordy, I better get this right up to the dispatcher. Bye. APB in a rush. Can make it a press flash. Better make it a 211. Add a possible 207. 207, but that's a kidnapping. I said a possible 207. All right, when you get that finished, take it up to the teletype room yourself, will you? Yeah. That's all. We'll do the rest of the talking. It won't be much. So we wait. You got any change? Hmm? No. I'll get some at the bar. Hmm. Good going, pal. But this kidnapping gimmick's just a stall. It gives you more time to get away. Well, what if I don't? Well, at least the deal's got a pretty big payoff. Oh, sure, Jim Dandy. Chair. This is a rush. The All Points Bulletin on Jean Cartier will be fanned out over the teletype network.
of the several hundred law enforcement agencies tied into the hookup. The bulletin was duplicated photographically. Copies will be dispatched to all departmental nerve centers. In this way, the entire facilities of the force can be thrown into synchronized action. Phyllis, go to your house and call Gene's father. Tell him to get here as quickly as he can, okay. please. It's 23 minutes past her mark. Hey, look, sister, are you going to yak over this phone all day? If you'd stop heckling me, I'd be through a lot sooner. Come on, let's go for a drink. Yeah. In its routine processing, one copy of the Corte Bulletin went to Chief of Detectives Cole. Other copies were placed in a press tray, one for each newspaper and syndicate. The tab code 20 called for the boys in the press room being notified immediately. Simultaneously, the bulletin was placed on a conveyor belt. This would carry it directly to the communication center. At 11.14 a.m., it was in the hands of one of the radio dispatchers receiving a final check. Lancaster, 2343. Lancaster, 2343. Thank you. Your number, please. Empire 3, 2140. Deposit 45 cents for the first three minutes, please. Any card. Then your university, even though it was. San Fernando calling. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hi, sugar. Gene, what about Gene? He's here. How long before you're gonna let him go? When will I see him? Sooner than you think. You know where, sweetie? Where? On a marble slab in the morgue. That is if you're silly enough to go squealing to the cops. I wouldn't be that foolish, would I? Now look, I'll cut it short. You get the old man out there. We want 200 grand. Cash on the line. That's a must. 13 hour 21, 13 hour 21, phone your station. Just, just say you're okay. Come on, come on. Honey? Yeah, yeah. The car radio, it's tuned into the police calls. No, watch out. Watch out. We're going to settle with you later, wise guy. She had to wait until the air was clear. Her signal was that bottom light. Operator. Oper Operator, give me the Los Angeles Police Department, quickly. Gene's dad, they couldn't locate him. I left him. Yes? Oh. The circuits are busy. What happened? He sent for me? Yeah, what about this APB on Coutier? You got it down as a possible 207. But we don't have enough facts on it yet to know whether to work on it as a hostage or a kidnap. We'll work on it as a kidnap. You've got to stop the police. I've got to. No. Oh, Light yeah. room. All units, be on the lookout for three male white American suspects. Pencil that APB. Good. Call communications immediately. Yeah. Hello. See this canceled all the way down the line. Yes, ma'am. We stopped it. We got in just under the wire. It's Mrs. Cordier. Chief of Detective Call speaking. They're holding a husband for a ransom, 200,000. Hello, Mrs. Cordier. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. Oh. Yeah, I see. Uh-huh. Right. Goodbye. The kidnappers were tuned in on the police calls. Boy, that was close. Within the hour, a hush meeting was held at the home of Chief of Detectives Cole, a procedure to avoid any unusual activities around the department. Well, what did you find out? Every detective in the division is on his way to headquarters. Oh, good. Did you explain to them about uh, straggling in? 
act as if nothing was up. Most emphatically. Fine. Now, I want you to start assembling a flying squad of 50 men in plain clothes and private cars. We must be able to saturate any district within a few minutes. Kidnappers are probably watching the Courtier house. Now we've got to keep everybody away. Oh, I'm sending a matron over to a neighbor's house to watch the kids. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, excuse me. Henderson. Thank you for getting here so fast, sir. How are you? This is Bob Henderson, special investigator for the phone company. Uh, let's go inside. We can talk in here. Now, Mrs. Cordier heard the telephone operator say San Fernando calling. Well, that puts them smack in the Los Angeles area. Yes, but the kidnappers gave our operator a phony number. We don't know where they called from. Well, the fact that Lancaster's a long-distance call, it helps matters, doesn't it? Well, some. Of course, our wire chiefs will be alerted in all the exchanges. Good. And I've ordered cards with the courtier's number on them placed before every long-distance operator in the area. I only hope there's no leak. The kidnappers will be watching every paper and listening to every broadcast. Trust her, babe. Meaning Joy? Yeah. Maybe. She got a car? Yeah. She can make Edwards in about 90 minutes flat. Could be a good idea. That's a straight drop. I wouldn't try it if I were you. Down. There's a cop within a block and a half of the house. She'll smell him out. Pretty fancy joint. Swank, huh? This gives a news broadcast. While I'm gone, catch them all, every one. Turn it on. I'm going to town. Better turn on a television set, too. Bye now. you mess with me, you're really gonna get it. And lay off him, will you? Lay off? I can count on you. Thanks a lot. By 2 p.m., Gene's dad had been contacted, but raising $200,000 in immediate cash was a superhuman job at best. Mr. Baker, please. No, I, uh, no, I can't wait. I've got, I've got to talk to him right away. Tell Miss Courtier. Uh, Miss Courtier. Yes? I'm a reporter, Los oh, Angeles. What do you want? Well, an APB came through, said your husband had been abducted. Oh, well, that was a mistake. There was nothing to it. It was canceled. Uh, but, but there was some reason for it in the first place. Exactly what well, did happen. Oh, nothing. Please, just forget about it. But, Mrs. Cordy... Please, you'll just have to excuse me. He's gone. Now what? Just a second. I picked up a reporter. He's talked to Mrs. Courier. He seems to be calling the shots. Have him brought in immediately. Uh-oh, this isn't so good. Why, well, where I like that girl never give up on a scoop like this. Well, there's one way out. Don't make it a scoop. That's what I think of me. It's dynamite. Call the boys together in the press room. 
Just one of them crosses us up, we're dead, you know. So is Courtier. It's up to us to make them see that. That's right. Give me the press room, please. Trapping more travelers. The storm is rapidly moving south. The weather bureau predicts heavy showers oh. late tonight and tomorrow. Make one for me on the rocks, would you? Double. Get out of this if you wanted to. Who says I want to? I get a third of that ransom, you know. Sure. Just like the split on the car sale, huh? Well, this time it'll be a lot different deal. You bet it will be. This time you're trading a robbery charge for the chair. Brother, you're really in the big league now. Big payoff, big stakes, none bigger your life. We can take him unawares like he did me. I'll hit him and you go right for his gun. Hey, suppose it misses fire. We'd both be shot full of more holes than a punch board. We was talking about gambling. I always say, don't worry none about the stakes. Take the odds with the big payoff, huh? At 325, a police technician disguised as the milkman spent a few hurried minutes at the courtier house. We're sending you a special broadcast. It scrambles so no one else can tune in. This gizmo will unscramble. Please. Please tell me, what do you think my husband's chances are? As long as the ransom negotiations are cooking, we think they'll keep him alive. What about that Greenlee's case last year? What about that? They killed that little boy right away. I know. There are four channels not used in L.A., 12 is one of them. That's the one we're sending out. Gene's father's not even sure he can raise that kind of money in cash. Not quickly. Mrs. Cudier, these men have to be caught up with before the money's paid over. Michigan, 5311. Look, I got a boat and I have a stake out. Extension 301. That's the police identification room. We're showing you the mug book over there. They'll give you instructions. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Cordier. Lancaster 2343. Thank you. The call came through to operator 502. This is 310. Your number, please. Trinity 6301. The operator plugged into a toll switching trunk and dialed back Trinity 6301. She should have gotten a busy signal. This plug-in signaled her supervisor. The caller had given a phony number. This is the supervisor, Miss Carter. May I help you? This is position 1202, and I have her call to the Lancaster number, and the calling number doesn't check out. When you call the calling line, I'll have it traced. Right. The operator then completed her Lancaster call, but left the cord in the recording trunk. This held the connection open for tracing purposes, even if the caller hung up. Okay. Two, three, four, three. Hello? 
Dick, this is Miss Carter. Will you case that trunk 126, please? Okay. Starting with the trunk number furnished by the supervisor, the switchman had to trace the call backwards through the network. From selector to selector, each successively leading him to the incoming trunk, thereby establishing from which exchange the call originated. to answer. The money ready? Well, I don't know. Gene's dad lives in L.A. He's doing the best he can, but you must realize it. I, I'll, I'll call him direct tonight at his house. And that's your last call. Hello. We won't pay you a cent until we talk to Gene. Not till we make sure he's all right. We... Hello? Hello? I... Oh. He hung up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I'll tell him. Mrs. Cordier, he just hung up on her. That's all. I'll type it up and send a copy to the chief. What's taking your men so long? If you ever see an exchange, you ever see the thousands of selectors, good job. Kidnappers are contacting the father tonight at his house. All right, have our men pick up Mrs. Cordier 10 blocks from her house. I want to hear him in Los Angeles. And phone for instructions when they hit town. No chance of picking the guy up. No, oh, not a prayer. The men from the press are here, dear. They're on the porch. All right, thank you, Tom. I'll be with them in a few minutes. Now, can you fix this other course from the father-in-law's house is sheltered here? Yes, if it's in the same exchange area. Well, if not, find a friend of the courtiers who lives in that area. We'll move to his house. All right, better hang right now. We've got to pick up the kidnappers while they're phoning tonight or else. Hello? Who is it? Yeah, this is Poe. Yeah. Wait just a minute. Call came from a drugstore, Thrifty, at Sixth and Spring. It's one of their biggest. If they can find a witness in that clam bake who saw a guy making a phone call, it'll be a miracle. All right, which one of you fellas went to the Courtier house? Me, sir. And I All right, you take it. Take it easy. I don't blame you for being teed off. Now, boys, this man had a red hot tip and I killed it. Wait until my editor Now, here it is. A man named Gene Courtier has been kidnapped. He's being held for $200,000 ransom. But the first man that breaks on the paper over the radio will cause Coutier's death just as surely as if he put a bullet in his head. How about me? How about you? You jipped me out of my exclusive. Now you want me to twirl my thumbs while one of these double-crossing cutthroats makes a sucker out of me. It's news and we have to print it. We've got a job to do. All right, man. There's a phone in that room. Who's first? Thanks, fellas. Thanks. I'll set up a special press room. If anything breaks, you'll get it immediately. Say, Chief, do you think these kidnappers are really catching all the newscasters? I'm positive. Got to hand it to you, Chief. You know, that gives me an idea for my 11 o'clock newscast. Harold Jackson and Joseph Lear were today removed to the death chamber at San Quentin. They kidnapped Lenny Moskowitz in San Francisco on the 16th of January, 1954. And although the victim was unharmed, the little Lindbergh law was invoked, and both men were nevertheless sentenced to die in the gas chamber. In this connection, it's interesting to note that the FBI has a phenomenal record of success. Since the passage of the federal kidnapping statute, it has investigated 453 cases of kidnapping. And of this total, 451 have been solved, and the other two are still under active investigation. In most of the cases solved, the courts agreed with the investigation, and the kidnappers have paid with their lives. To sum it all up, the devices of modern crime detection make it virtually impossible to collect a ransom and get away with it. Well, we have 187 units working. The whole town is blanket. Captain, and Mr. Cordier, may I see you for a moment, please? Excuse me, sir. Chief. Uh, 
You know, it's a long distance factor. It's a rougher deal this time. You know that. How long will it take? Hmm. Well, it depends on luck. On luck? Well, if the first selectors they look at in each shelf are the right ones, they'd face out in a few minutes. So it takes longer. Have you? Have you got all the money you can use? All we can possibly use. Any more would be in each other's way. <laughs> You understand that Jean's life is completely in your hands. Yes, I know that. Now, now I'm sure they won't call again. This is our one chance, our last chance. We have a direct line to the phone exchanges. They'll give us a blow-by-blow -blow account. There's nothing, absolutely nothing we can do to help you. Both you and Jean's dad are on your own. <laughs> but you've got to hold them until the switchman traced the call, or... That's it. Knowing that Doris could identify the Lincoln, he switched to a U-Drive car. A friend fixed up the radio to pick up police calls. That's what held him up. Why isn't he back by now? How long does it take to drive to town and put in a lousy call? What is this? Aren't you getting a little edgy, bub? Maybe you need another drink. Nice stiff one. in just a minute. Then it's going to be too late. No. No, it's no go. But what are you afraid of? Look, he's tough. Plenty tough. The first blow, it's got a KO. Shh. Here he comes. It's too dangerous. Come on inside. Yeah. We was just talking about picking up broads. A guy can get a smack in the kisser. What's the matter with you? You're sweating? Your hand. You're shaking like an old woman. Hey, what's going on? We're caught. I don't want to have no gun on me. What if we meet up with your boss? So if we hear a car coming, we duck out of sight. We gotta run all. Are we gonna run all the way into town? Oh, brother, we're in the crossfire. That guy's come too by now. Hey, just what the doctor ordered, fast wheels. I in these buggies, that's my racket. The owner must be around someplace. Uh, he's probably necking with some bait. Now, that ain't him. That car's black. Get in, it'll only take me a second to jump these wires. All right, get in, Cordier. You're coming with me. You're gonna tell your wife everything is just dandy. Town, it really rains. Well, that's a grim picture. Suspicious, just holler. You stay here like call you. A light in the Brighton Exchange was rigged to go on simultaneously with a call being placed over the phone. Long as you dare, 
hold it. The call terminated in this selector. It gave the switchman the key to the preceding selector. Yeah, you got it? A, 504, A, 5 by 1. They had to find a selector that was hooked into the same circuit as the first one. There were 36 of them in Bay 504. Each had to be examined until the right one was found. We can't stall much longer. Hello? I told you I wanted to speak to the old man. Oh, well, j just a minute. Dad? Dad? 403i, 4x1. He's coming. We got the second digit. One more selected to check and we know the exchange. Hello? What took you so long? Have you got the dough? Well, it's quite a lot of money to raise so quickly in cash. But I'll have it for you tomorrow. Well, that's more like it. Now, look, here's how I want it. 20,000 in 50s, 20,000 in 20s. The next selector was the vital one. There it is. It's coming from the Dunkirk Exchange. I'll call the police radio room. I'll call it Dunkirk Switch Room. All bills must be old, unmarked, and not in sequence. All came into Brighton of the Dunkirk trunk. The Dunkirk boys have got the ball now. Pull it out a little more. Yes? Attention all special units. Attention all special units. Move into section 11. 187 police units roared into section 11. Code number for the Dunkirk exchange area. Attention all special units. Move into section 11. Hey! Hey! They're sending out one of those code area calls, all special units. What gives? Can't be us. How they know who we are? Well, make it snappy, will you? I will. I put all the money in a strong suitcase. Four straps. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I quite understand. Are you stalling? How about my talking to Gene? How about that? All right, come on, you. Hurry up. Make it fast. Hello? Oh, darling. Just to hear your voice. That's all. Wait, wait. That might have been a recording. How can I be sure? Let me ask him just one question. All right, one question, one answer. Gene, what does May 29th, 1944 mean to you? May 29th? Yes, on an emergency, it was through 50 and 192. Miss Dunkirk, uh, 73899. 3599 Hayden. All special units, all special units, go to 3RA. That was the day I proposed to you. Hey, another one of those special unit gags. Let's get going. Come on. Gene! Gene! to you on the 28th, not the 29th. Doris? Doris, are you all right? Hey, what's the matter? Gee, how many other men would have remembered?